everybody. So this lawnmower is just an old one I got for like 10 bucks a long time ago. And I'm going to want to put an electric motor on it, turn, turn it into an electric vehicle. I put just some old side rails from, a, from my dad's 1985 Dodge on there. I did that a long time ago. I might take them off. But what I'm hoping to do is link, hooking a motor right here. So, I, actually, I, I already have hooked a motor here once. I hooked a, an AC motor and had an extension cord behind it, but it wasn't very powerful enough. And I hope to be able to turn this pulley right here. And the transmission works good enough for a test. Now, for the actual motor to power it, I'm going to be using, or at least attempting to use, a 12-volt starter motor from my dad's 1985 Dodge. <laughs> I, I used two things from that. Anyway, and I'll just have a battery, and I might overvolt it too, like add 24 volts, 36 volts, just to kind of blow it up and see what it does. What? Well, it turns out this starter motor is fried. I thought it was still good, but Oh well, it's been in the shed for like four years, so it could have definitely broken, or it could have been broken before I got it. But, I think we can use a treadmill motor. This is a one and a half horsepower motor. It's 100 volts, and I'm only running at 12 volts, so I could definitely hook up more batteries in the series. And, I think that would be pretty good. If it's if, Even if this isn't an, an, enough torque, I could always gear it down and just... Uh, over it so it'd have to go at a higher speed. Well, I found this pulley and it actually, surprisingly, it fits under the thread on the motor. So let's put that on and see if it works. Because it doesn't have to be exactly, it doesn't have to be exactly aligned. It, it can be wobbly a little bit. I have to say, that's pretty darn good. That's very good, actually. And actually, it kind of fits in the old motor mount. But, so I'd, I'd, I'd make it a lot better. But anyway, so that's this is basically where it's going to be. It's going to be on the back of the lawnmower, going directly to the transmission. And actually, it's kind of sturdy enough now where I can connect it up and get a good idea of how to operate. pretty strong, that's for sure. Let's test the uh, transmission. Reverse. That works. That's high, high speed. It's medium speed. See how it works is you have the lever going through here. And that goes into here, and directly connects to the transmission. Of course, whenever it's on high speed, it'll be easier to bog down the motor. But I can always switch to lower speed. And this will have enough power to probably pull me up a hill or something. Yeah, that's a lot of power there. Now let's try to get that motor mounted on there more secure. Well, I think I figured out how I'm going to mount the motor to this. I took off the little mounting bracket that's inside of the, that was connected to the motor with two bolts. And I find that I could actually connect it right to this bracket right here and just weld it across here and weld it down here probably just three tacks that way I could always grind it off later and that would be strong enough to hold it in place I wouldn't have to worry about it back here or up here and now actually the reason why I'm going to go with this 
because it seems like it would be very unstable. What I'm going to do is I'm actually relying on the springiness of this back piece of metal right here because it, it it bends in. I'm going to I'm going to weld this bracket to it instead of relying on these bolts because these bolts were just I think I found them in the woods or something like that a long time ago and they're they're too rusty to tighten or loosen now so I'm just going to weld it right here and right here and that'll be strong enough hopefully and if it's not strong enough well that'll make some good footage for it breaking somehow because that'd be pretty awesome let's get to welding so the first weld is this one and for this weld I'm going to try 1 16th inch welding rods with three car batteries powering it so that's 36 volts and that should be good enough but I could be wrong pretty good to me. Now let's disconnect the batteries. So now that we have the motor connected to the transmission okay, let's start upping the voltage and seeing how fast it can go. We have th uh, 12 volts first. Very slow. 24 volts. Still kind of slow. Then 36 volts. And it's. Yeah, it's enough to. It's enough to drag me across the ground. That's pretty good. Take it for a test drive. I'll have to figure out the batteries and stuff, but okay, so we have the power down here. The motor spinning.
go down the hill and then up the hill over there. starting to bog down now. But it's getting it. I think I might definitely need bigger batteries. Okay, I'm just gonna get a scene exit. Shifting is a little bit uh, work in progress, but oh well. So that's pretty much all I wanted to do on the first part of this video. All I was really aiming to do was adding the electric motor, and that mounted pretty nicely, and I'm pretty happy with it. The next videos, we're gonna be working on the wiring harness and making sure we have the right voltage in the batteries. But one last little thing, it occurred to me. The motor is about the same wattage as my electric bicycle motor. But, use, but it uses twice as many volts. That must mean it uses half the amps. So why don't I also add my 24 volt lithium block for my electric bike. So that gives us 60 volts. I wonder how that'll work. Sixty volts might be a little bit much. Wow. Belt's getting pretty warm, that's for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!